Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and I'm your host. And to my right and to your left, of course, is the lovely Julia Purchasepi. Hello, Julia. How are Hello. you? We've been away for two weeks I now. Know. I hope that... Uh, so much has happened. There is so much going on in this city. <laughs> We're very, very proud of the things that are happening around us. And we are coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV. And you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. We're at 617 708 -3290. You can give us a call and let us know what's going on artfully in your town or in your community. Also, we're streaming live at www.bnntv.org. So if you want to let somebody know outside of the listening area, which is Boston proper, uh, mm -hmm. people can uh, log on and check us out there. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say a big shout out to uh, Evan and the gang up in Albany, New York. They're... Uh, They've been uh, logging on and, and checking us out uh, because they have a great arts association up there. Cool. And Ashland West, Ash, Ashland, West Virginia, too, yeah. has just kind of joined our little team here. We appreciate everything that they're doing down there. They have a great artist community down there. They're doing some really focused things on, on public art. Yeah. You know, cool. which is one of the things we're going to be talking about how are you I'm good how are you I'm good I'm good I it's you know I, I missed that week but you know the they had the race and yep. and all of that in the holiday and we've been just back to school yeah today so which is always exciting and it, it's great to get back into the swing you miss the kids you know yeah and then uh, uh, and we get them on get get it get it going again and everything seems to be going great do you do any music stuff over the break? I did. I um, we we actually did some uh, some new rehearsal. We brought a new drummer in, the great David Roy, cool. from the fabulous Roy's and from uh, uh, Room Full of Blues. He's going to be playing on our next CD. Mm -hmm. So we actually sat in the studio with David and went over a bunch of songs. It was very exciting to have nice. have him in the room. It's kind of like validates you a little bit, you know, when you have somebody who's kind of you know yeah. Tonight Show fame kind of guy, you know. So it was it was cool to have him on. When are you playing next? I have yet to see you, you live. You haven't seen me live yet. I know. I know. I've got a couple of gigs coming up okay. uh, that I'll be letting people know about. They're not until the summer. So okay. I, I don't, you know, I don't play out as often as I used to. I used to play out a lot because mm. I was in a couple of different bands and stuff. But schedule just doesn't allow it, and I don't like to play over the winter. Well, yeah. You know, because it's just you got to hibernate. Right. Yeah. I got some weddings coming up, but I don't you think do. you're invited. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, no. I, pl I, oh, okay. I, I play at the ceremony, you know? Yeah, that's so I'm, nice. So I'm doing two church weddings and a couple of kind of out in the pasture. And they request specific songs? They or do. Or you just kind of No, they, they, ask, they ask for some specific songs, and I'll learn them for yeah. them, you know, and stuff that's like that. Nice. So, yeah, it works out pretty cool. Nice. You got a bird's eye view of this marathon, I, I, I heard. I did, yeah. Are you sitting balcony <laughs> Brookline, huh? Yeah, it was exciting. Yeah, did you, uh, now, was it a party, a bunch of people at a house? Yeah, something? it was a little get-together. I've never done that. That sounds like it yeah. would be a lot of fun. Well, you know, it's a day off, yeah. so why not get together <laughs> with some friends and have a good time? That's great. That's yeah. Good. How's the movie biz? It's good. Um, we, you know, we're gearing down, I guess you don't gear down, but we're winding down from yeah. the school year. Yeah. Um, but we're, you know, there's still a lot going on, mm -hmm. and um, we've acquired a couple new films, good, and good. Um, one of which is a local film called Power to the Pedals um, by the filmmaker Bob Nesson and Sue Edwards. Mm -hmm. um, they just had their first premiere uh, in Boston at the BSA, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it went great, and it's a pr kind of an activist piece about, mm -hmm. uh, in, I think it's Somerville or Cambridge, um, this organization that uses bicycles is commissioned by the city um, and uses bicycles to pick up recycling and trash. Um, so it's all about you know it's ways really to make green. the city infrastructure green, greener yeah. and um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. In case you don't know, Julia works for a company that supplies documentary films from all over the world to educational yeah. facilities. Yeah. And nonprofits uh -huh. um, and also to you at home. I mm. mean, you can purchase our films and. Um, you know, and that's great. That's have great. screenings. And How you know? You mentioned that the, that one of the new ones is local. What is the ratio of, of mm -hmm. independent filmmakers that are local that you yeah. work with, and people that come question. from like you know outside of 
New England, let's say. Let's call yeah. New England local. Yes. Okay. We we think of New England as local. Mm -hmm. um, I I want to say recently almost 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, I mean we. In addition to distributing films, we have the fiscal sponsorship program, which I told you about. Yep. A lot of filmmakers in that program are local. Um, and so we're very invested in the local film community. Um, and there's a lot of great things happening mm -hmm. here and a lot of great work coming out of this area. Um, so we, the, we're kind of in this phase now of taking older films and um, remastering them, which is kind of taking the newer technology and the older film. Digitizing and, some analog yeah, pieces yep, and stuff? Yeah, oh, okay. so um, we're kind of in this phase and, and there's some local filmmakers with older works who um, you know we're working on and... Um, now do you do that for your own benefit? So that it's easier maybe to distribute the pieces instead of sending out these VHS tapes? I'm assuming they're on VHS. You don't have reels, do you? Uh, well, there's some, yeah, really? there's some film reels, yeah, 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 some stuff is still on there, um, and so either they jump right to, to DVD or, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever. So or, I know the process, yeah, I know the process, because I have some old shows of ours that I've been trying to make sure we get onto our YouTube, yep. speaking of our YouTube, and I know the process that goes through doing all of that. Yeah. Um, I do want to remind everybody that our show will be on YouTube tomorrow, tonight's show, mm -hmm. uh, will be on YouTube around this time. And, we, and if you want to check out that, some of the older shows, or check out what we're doing, you can go to YouTube, and the address is It's All About Arts 1. Yep. And where else, how else can people get in touch with us? You can Julia? tweet us uh, at It's All About Arts um, on Twitter. Yes. Of course. Um, yeah, so let us know what's going on um, in your world, um, yeah. and we'll talk about it. That's really, really cool. Um, one of the other things that, that I, I wanted to touch base with you, you were in the Commons uh, this past week. I was, yeah. Uh, at, at, a, uh, at, a, at, a, at a gathering of people that a were rally. Work, A rally. Good old rally. I love the Boston Commons. <laughs> I know, it's great. You know, and yeah. uh, how was it attended? What was, the, what was, the, what was going on? It was pretty good. It was um, for um, an organization and a campaign called Jobs Not Jails. Mm -hmm. um, and Massachusetts is... Um, has a, a really high incarceration rate, um, and they're also planning to build a bunch of new jails. Mm. So this campaign is kind of saying, don't build more jails. You know, take those people who are either you know prone to going to jail or who are just getting out of jail, and kind of Get them work jobs. on the rehabilitation process. Yeah. Get them jobs, yeah. um, education, and it, it kind of ties into all of these different you know various. Yeah. Um, I don't know, causes, yeah. I guess you would well, say. Well, that, so I think that's, that, that's a good one, prevent, yeah. to prevent you know, the return. I mean, yeah. if you get out of jail and you can't get a job because, of, because you've had something unfortunate happen in your life, yeah. and you've, you know, you've kind of paid your debt, I guess. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to get a job, especially if you're a family guy or a woman and you yep. want to you know, help support your family. And if, the, you know, if there's nothing there, I can only assume that kind of pushes you in the wrong direction. Yeah. It? Yeah. yeah, and we're talking about really minor infractions, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. So um yeah. Well, that's cool. Was yeah. it well attended? It was. Yeah. Um it was very well attended. There was a um what is that called? A, bra a brass line band or a oh. brass band? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. Um which was really fun and yeah. they played and then there were a bunch of speakers and that's good. um yeah it was good. I think awareness is a big deal and I think that's one of the things this country's built on is making sure that people are aware of what's going on. Yep. And uh, I think that that's part of our gig here is making Definitely. sure that people know what is happening in the community and that let me t t turn that to our, to the show tonight. We have uh We've invited the. We talked to uh, some people a few weeks ago from uh, the Boston Arts Academy. That's right, we did about uh, about art education yeah. and, and about how we're we're we're, we're educating our younger citizens, mm -hmm. and uh, um, we've we've brought in the prof we've brought in some professionals to talk about that tonight. Uh, we're very very excited to have uh, representatives from Sacred Heart School in Rosendale, yeah. where I went to school. Did you know that? That's incredible. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did go to school there, and uh, uh, and look at me now. I know. <laughs> look how well you turned out. No, I'm sorry. 
But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah. So um, anybody out there that's got somebody that's going to be going to school pr r relatively soon, or, or thinking of changing the school, this is the per this is the night you're going to want to tune in tonight, and, and and get a little insight on 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 what the educational thing is going on, or what, what kind of we're talking STEM and STEAM. Yep. We're going to have that whole thing explained to us, and we're going to figure out, you know. Get, a, get an opportunity to get educated mm -hmm. here a little bit tonight. And I think it's important that, that you know, parents now that they're kind of ending their school year and maybe thinking about, well, maybe I want to go do something different. This would be a good opportunity for them to, to find out that there's, you know, some alternatives yep. and, and uh, in the way that we're educating our scholars. So I, I think it's going to be an interesting show tonight. I think so, too. Anything else going on? Um, You've done any ballroom dancing? Uh, well... I have actually. <laughs> I don't know why you just asked me that, but I had a feeling. <laughs> I just felt ballroom <laughs> dancing coming from you tonight. I don't know. No. Um, I have not done much, no. but no. I have dabbled. Um, we're gonna. I am gonna be bringing some cuts in from the new album, though. I think I'm gonna start Good. start uh, cool. sh uh, sh promoting a little bit of that self shameless promotion. Yeah. This weekend, this past Saturday, I had the great pleasure and honor to hang in our new b and gallery. By the way, get on your Twitter account and, and send us a tweet. tweet. Thank you. And I've been calling it horrible things. And, <laughs> uh, and send us a tweet of what you think we should call our studio, our gallery here. Um, we have no say over what it's going to be called, but I think that we can probably make some suggestions. The High Park Arts Association came in with 12 incredible pieces. Now, if you remember, the end of last month, we went out and joined the South End yeah, Artists so Association. That was a lot, a lot. We're going to do it again next <laughs> week. Uh, we're going to actually go outside of the studio, so yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm now, is that, is that kind of a competition we're doing to name the gallery, or is that just uh, an no, informal... No, I think we're just asking what your for opinion okay. would be. Right. I don't know. Okay. I'd, I'd, have to get, I'd have to mate with the great Curtis Sanderson to talk yeah. about it. About maybe you know. I'm all about competition. Yes, right. <laughs> or maybe some sponsorship of our hey now. of our great gallery. Okay. <laughs> Um, I do want to take a couple of seconds to talk about the great organization that keeps us here on BNN. We're very, very proud of our affiliation with the Boston Main Streets. Boston Main Streets, is, uh, as I've told you in the past, is a volunteer-driven organization that helps revitalize the business districts around the city. There's about 19 of them around Boston. What they do is they, they work with the property owner to make sure that he has the right demographic information so he'll know what kind of business to put in down front. And once the business is in there, they talk with the businesses and meet with them about you know, graphic design, how the business should look, how the, the signage should be, and make sure it's not hanging over the sidewalk too far and get you through all of that permitting stuff down at City Hall. And then, you know, there's also a group that, that does some really, really incredible outreach in the, the promotions to department of the Main Street's organizations. They run your different farmers' markets. And this, pe uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Saturday before Easter, we had the egg hunt in Fallon Field. Over 1,000 people showed up to, to try and get 6,000 eggs that were scattered around. Wow. Yours truly was the, was the master ceremony, uh, counting down with our great city councilor, Tim McCarthy, uh, uh, to uh, count down these kids to go and uh, uh, collect the eggs. It was a mad dash. It was the running of the bulls. It was for kids six and under. You know, so these little guys are running around. A with, thousand of them? The, well, with their parents okay, was a right. thousand kids. A thousand kids. We That's had like 3,500 people. No, we didn't have 3,500 <laughs> people. But it was, it was great. And then we had an egg toss. Have you ever been involved in an egg toss? Yeah, that's tough. Uh, you, li you line up the six-year-old across the, the, the way with the parent. And they toss the egg, and then the parent takes a giant step but back. But how do they? Do they? Is it with the hands or the gotta, spoons? No, no, no. You got to catch oh. it. It's a raw egg. Okay, yeah. So you got to catch it, and of course there's a big, huge group at the beginning, and that gets whittled down yeah, quickly, really. <laughs> yeah. down to your your top 15 or so. Wow. And uh, we went about five tosses before we had a winner, and the winner was a four-year-old kid from Rosendale. Wow. I was thrilled. Good for them. Oh, it was a lot, a lot of fun. A lot but, of um, hand-eye coordination for a four-year-old. <laughs> caught it like a football, and it didn't break, and that's all that mattered. But they run those kinds of things, and then what they do is they, that's to bring people down into the business district so that they'll see the kind of businesses and what's going on. Anybody who's been in Rosendale, as I have, for as long as I have, uh, know that Rosendale Square was just not someplace back in the early 80s you'd want to go to. Yep. Now it's a destination. 
We stood it in is. line the other night to have dinner. And it's that kind of thing that Main Streets does. But they also support this program. Now, we're really, really grateful for the things that they do for us. Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, also, this great building I need to talk about. BNN TV is a great opportunity for you to come and do your own television programming. Let's say you have your own nonprofit and you want to come and have a weekly show here to talk about your mission statement and the different things that you do to improve your, com your community. This is the place to come and do it. If you go to www.bnntv.org, you can click on Janice Williams's name. She is the person in charge of membership and making sure everybody's facing in the right direction. Uh, she can uh, help you with all of that. The other side is you become a member. That's Channel 23. Don't change now. Wait until after the show to change. <laughs> channel 23 on the other side, they do, um, uh, you become a member. You take some great Final Cut Pro uh, classes. You find out how to work these amazing cameras, how to do lighting, how to do sound. And you produce and go down to our Timothy Smith <coughs> laboratory downstairs where the state-of-the-art Macs are and edit your program and lo and behold, put it on TV. So if you want to be involved in that, you go to www.bnntv.org, uh, click on Janice or Jim Atwood, and they will um, guide you through what needs to be done. Yeah. How's that sound? Do you have a good. Julia's World tonight? I do. You know what we're going to do is we're going to change it up just a okay. little bit, Keep put Julia's World a little further into the sure. show. Uh, we're going to get right to our, our first two guests. Uh, I, I am very proud to have, have in the studio the principal and the vice principal of Sacred Heart School tonight. Uh, they're going to come in. We're going to educate us a little bit on education. Educate and us. I think right. that's a really cool thing. Listen, gang, Let's you're watching it. BNN TVs. It's all about us. Give us a tweet at It's All About Arts. If you'd like, you can let us know what's going on or give us a call. We are coming to you live from Studio B, 617-708-3290. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes, gang. Don't go away.
gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. My name is Glenn Williams. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. And we are coming to you live from our beautiful Studio B. You can give us a call if you'd like. We're at 617-708-3290. And remember, if you want to send us a tweet, you can do that at It's All About Arts, at your Twitter account. And right now, it's my great pleasure, and believe me, it is an honor to in introduce you to uh, the principal of Sacred Heart School, uh, Ms. Monica Haldeman. Thank Ms. Haldeman, you. Monica, Thank can you. I call you Monica? Yes, you can. Thank you so much for Thank coming you for in. Having I us. really do appreciate it. And the assistant principal, uh, Kay Cody. Hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being here with us, ladies. It's very, very important. One of the things that we talk about here at BNN TV and at It's All About Arts is the education of our younger citizens. And, and I thought that it might be a good idea after we had um, the, the, the couple of the teachers from over at the Arts Academy mm -hmm. come in and talk a little bit about, I got some more questions about like, well, how does it change? What, it, what happens? What is this STEM? What is, can you explain <laughs> what STEM is, is to me? Um, STEM is a process of education. Okay. It is originally was formulated for science, technology, engineering, math. Um, those are the big four, aren't those they? Those are the big four. However, with your involvement in the arts, you know how important it is to develop both sides of the brain. Mm -hmm. And educators, we spent a lot of time on the academic side, the book knowledge side, the, mm -hmm. the memorization, the different skills of that nature. STEM, which we've uh, made bigger into STEAM, incorporates the arts. So okay. you are developing the right side of the brain as well as the left side right. of the brain. And all scientific studies show the more you infuse the arts, the more creativity scholars have, the higher the achievement. Now, I've, I've, been, I've been saying that, but there are, there are, there's, there's actual studies that have compared uh, our younger citizens who have worked in a strict STEM yes. education, and then when they kind of added the steam to, to it, that there is it there. Is it their awareness, their confidence? What, what kind of makes well, it different? It's another d dimension. If you look at STEAM or STEM education, it's a process. Inquiry-based, problem-solving, many of those facets. But when you're planning, say, a STEAM unit or a STEM unit. A unit is? A unit of study. A unit so of study. So say, for example, okay. we're right. going to study machines. Okay. Simple machines. Okay. All right. A lever. Okay. How much better for a lot of scholars, the visual parts, if they can draw that lever or illustrate that lever or okay. use it in their designs, their engineering designs, plans. So arts play a very big, big role. Now, does, the, does, the, does, the, does this bring the teachers maybe a little closer together to maybe have to work? Kay, you're, you're kind of just freshly out of the classroom. This is your first year as assistant principal. If I haven't by, but yet, congratulations on, on that move. Thank I, you. Uh, it's quite a move, isn't it? It is a little different. It's a little bit different on that side of the, of the hallway, isn't it? Um, but you're, you're fresh out of the classroom. Um, how does that portray to the kids sitting in front of you, that kid that's sitting there and is having maybe some trouble in engineering or having some trouble in, in, in math or something like that, where you kind of infuse that how to mix colors or how to the, the rationality of whatever I mean to, to, to it. How does that steam help? It gets to showcase what people do well. Some uh, people write well, some people uh -huh. draw well and with steam education it is all infused together. I mean you think of steam as mostly science, technology, math. It really isn't. You have it in social studies. Mm. You might be studying Native Americans the problem might be, how would that Native American build a teepee? And they would have raw materials, and they would sketch out what they want, and then they would actually build it to see if it would be a livable. Um, and that sounds like it brings in engineering and math and, It does. You know. In the whole process, they're studying social studies. And then they'll write about it. That brings in language, mm -hmm. language arts. They'll read about these things. That brings in reading. It's all across the curriculum. It's yeah. just not science, technology, right. engineering, and math. It is infused throughout the curriculum. Now, we're, we're talking about um, uh, elementary school. KZ, we've got three-year-olds three in this building, three right? Yes. Up to middle school. Yes. And um, is it, do, you, do you kind of start that in the fifth grade, kind of start that kind of education? Yeah. Oh, in no. It starts with the three-year-olds. It does? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, they'll be presented with a simple problem. Um, they might be given blocks and told that they have to build something that can, say for example, get a cat that's caught in a tree. They have to build it, 
explain why it'll work, how it solves that problem. And explain how it works. Three yes. year old? Yes, yes they're three really? year olds, really? yes. With three year olds or with any any child, you place the standard there, they'll raise to that standard. Mm -hmm. You place the standard here, they'll raise to that standard. It's the adults who put the barriers in the way. Yeah, I guess we do get in the way yes, sometimes, we do. don't we? Yes, we do. I mean, I, I guess if your expectations are low, that's what where you're gonna, you know, consider it a success. Yeah. But it's we we want we want our younger kids. Boy, they're so much smarter than than I was when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, and they're so much faster at, at rationalizing things and figuring things out and stuff. Two plus two is still four. That's correct. There's no question about that. But but adding, I think, the arts into it. And being an artist, you know, and, and being an art teacher, I, I, I see the aha moments. Mm -hmm. uh, when a kid figures out four plus four is eight, they go, okay, four plus four is eight. But when they make purple, That's correct. the look on their face That's is right. the confidence and the actual accomplishment. And the, one of the things I like to do is I like to take a paper plate and put blue and I put red on it and a little bit of white. And I have each kid mix a little bit of it. Then I'll, then I'll make purple. And I send one kid around the room to find that purple. They can't. That's right. And you can see it in their face. They actually go, this is my purple. Is that what we're looking at? Is, are those kind of victories are you looking for? Yes. Because the math part there is, I say, you've got to take yeah. half of this, half of that. Right. But the important thing is that they have to explain it. Yeah. Oh, the explanation, oh, the presentation part. Right. And the marvelous thing is, in this world, we work as teams. I was just going to bring in the teams. And okay. they all work as teams, and it is so gratifying to see young children help each other out, question each other why they did this or well, that. Well, the students work as they teams. They do. Yes. I yes. see, I see. Well, if you look at the skills necessary coming up for the next generation, 21st century, it's a lot of team skills. Corporations are saying we need people who can problem solve right. on the spot, who can work in teams, who can communicate. That's what we're teaching these scholars at an early age, to start them early with the skills that they'll need to be successful. And you can start at the age of three. That's, that, uh, I, I always think, and I'm, I, forgive me if I, if, I, if I say that, I probably think like this like a lot of people do. Those kids are being babysat. No. no. <laughs> Just by your reaction, I can tell. Um, at Sacred Heart, um, we start at age three. It is not a nursery school. It is not, it's an academic-based program mm -hmm. starting at age three. It lays the foundation for the next level, for the next level, for the next level. Is it a progression between teachers? I mean, is your third grade teacher preparing this kid to go to the fourth grade? Absolutely. And that communication going on between Absolutely. them? Absolutely, yeah. To make sure that the transition is, I don't know if I want to say smooth as much as I want to say successful. Right. Well, it requires a lot of communication amongst the faculty. Mm -hmm. They need to talk to each other. Because I'm not just, as the principal, I'm responsible for the whole building as well mm -hmm. as Kate. But if I'm the fourth grade teacher, I'm not just responsible for my fourth graders. Mm. I'm responsible for every scholar in that building, from the three-year-olds through grade eight. Well, how does that work? Well, what, what you... um, that's just the way we are. That is our mission. It's a that's real team are. effort. It's a real team effort, yes. It certainly is. Tell me a little bit about Sacred Heart School. Um, it's a great place. It is a great place. <laughs> it is. It was founded in 1916, believe it or not, um, by the school. was staffed by the Sisters of Charity, Charity of, of Convent Station. Station. I don't I know if remember. they're still in existence. It was then in 1954, the present school building was built where it is now. And um, that was then staffed by the sisters, the school sisters of St. Joseph. And what a debt we owe to them, yeah. but that's another whole story. Well, I had all sisters yes. of St. Joseph's exactly. when I went yeah. in the early 60s. And you were in the new building in 1954. Yes. yes. Yeah. Originally, they had been in an old building up on Cummins Highway where the church is. Okay. We are also the only Catholic school that's located geographically apart from the church. And the reason being, back in the 1800s when they were building the church and it was just a tent, they owned all that land going down to oh, where the school currently is. Oh, I is. see, I see, yeah. And the planning wasn't that far ahead, so Just that's why Just happened to work out difference. that way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, there is, uh, there's another letter you've added. Yes, there is. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, religion has, has always been a big part, was a big part of my education when I, when I, I was an altar boy. I was, I sang in the choir, mm -hmm. you know, I did all, I worked at the rectory. I mean, you know, the religious aspect of it was very, very important. Um, all of the kids at Sacred Heart School don't have to be 
Roman Catholic students. They're not all they? Roman Catholics. They're not, are They're they? not even all Christians. Really? Yeah. How, how, we have educated Jewish children. We uh, Currently, we're educating Muslim children. Really? Um, yeah, it's. I think it's it's the environment that we create. It's the atmosphere that we create. We teach through loving um, and giving, and um, I think we try to teach as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And so, there's just a a mission for us that we don't say, well, it's just Catholics. I think we're called to a to really educate all children. That's great. And that's where our mission is. Is, is that across the board for? Uh, Catholic schools. I would say so. I would say so. I mean, we're not yeah. turning any children away or anything no, like I would that. Hope I mean, not. somebody who wants to be involved in in that sounds like incredibly, right. fa you know, family uh, is is welcome, right? right? And we teach religion now; it's infused throughout the whole curriculum. Yeah. I mean, so. And, and I is it like catechism, or or is no. it is it? It's not. Kate, what is it? What is it? When we when we add religion to to this stream now, steam, stem, st steam, stream. Stream. Well, it's science, I'm write technology, a song about that. religion, engineering, <laughs> yeah. arts, and math. When we add the the religion aspect into this, you corrected me earlier. It's not a curriculum. No. It's a. It's a process. It's a process of teaching That's the correct. curriculum. Yes, and which the curriculum is the Massachusetts Just Common Core, core Curriculum Frameworks. Frameworks. Right. So there's so there's a there's a group of legislators someplace saying this is what we expect yep. our kids to know by the this grade and that grade. That's yep. our guide. Yes, that's okay. our guide. Is it the only guide? No, because religion isn't included in those frameworks. Right. We have that through the archdiocese and the nation. Okay. The NCEA. Yeah, they have the national standards and benchmarks for Catholic identity and Catholic education, mm -hmm. and that's what we follow for that. Um, but the curriculum itself comes from the NCEA mm -hmm. or the Archdiocese. And, um, and that is all children, whether they are Catholic or non-Catholic, take religion as a course of study. Right. So It's theology. Right, it's, we do not force non-Catholics or Christians for devotion. Practice. Or, or practice something that would go against their beliefs. You're not making someone receive communion that this weekend. Correct. No, because we wouldn't want it done to us. Right, right. Yeah. right. But that does and not we respect all religions. But so. we still have our celebrations, our liturgies, yeah. our adorations, our mm -hmm. penance. Right. We still all do all So it's like part of the education. Yeah. It's, and it's, and it's, you'll find the non-Catholic children are the most curious and the most interested. And they'll ask the most questions. They'll be like, we don't do that. Why do you do that? <laughs> so, and, and you know, we yeah. have a few funky yes. rituals. We do. That, we know, have some. That people might not. I mean, we just had two saints yesterday. Maybe. That's cool. And the children were asking today. Why not? That Bring happened. them on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, it's time for my, my disclosure. I am I'm the art teacher at your school. Yes, you are. And I have to tell you that it's been, uh, it's one of the most joyous times I've had is, is teaching these younger kids. Uh, educate and, you know being being all being part of that whole family part thing so not only do we have administrators in this conversation but also somebody that's that has kids in front of them every day uh, I do see a huge huge difference in in the fact that kids uh, I'm partnering with four or five other teachers in the school to to do art projects that are going along with I mean, I mean, the second grade is learning about about animals. There, there's certain animals they're going to be studying and doing that. We're making the animals. We're making paper mache animals mm -hmm. out of that. And and I've done the the American Indian thing yes, where we know. had everybody do that and studied community. Mm -hmm. What's a community? How do you know who the chief's tent is if you just came <laughs> out of the woods? You know how That's you right. know that That's whole right. thing. And it is um, it's it's some of the joyous times of of, of of my days is being at that school. Well, um, even observing you in the classroom. Um, <laughs> These are the people that come in and check out. What I'm doing. He has four year olds <laughs> yeah. up presenting yes. eloquently. Yes. yes. And and they can tell you landscape or portrait. Yes. Mm. They can tell you the medium they are using. Yes. They can tell you the subject. That's from you, the teacher. Yeah. Well, you know what that, and, and anybody across the board will, will say this, is if one of the most difficult things to do is to talk in front of a group, whether they're your best friends or not, you know. And I think there's two sides of, of that whole presentation thing. And, and I've, I've learned that, that it's paying attention to when someone's presenting is as important as standing there and presenting. Because the hard part about presenting is, are they listening and do they care what I'm saying? That's right. Or am I making a fool of myself? 
you know? So that whole discipline of being able to sit and listen to somebody explain something again mm -hmm. that the kid three times before explained is, 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 a, is a practiced thing. Sure, and, and it's a reinforcement. Yes. Yeah. And we actually had some visitors from, from the, church, the, the parish that came and visited us. And, and we were doing some uh, sculpturing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the kids come up and, and present to them, the kindergarten kids. And they were so, and so confident in what they were That's doing. And, and this is what this is, and this is how I did it. And, and, and that confidence in them bleeds to that math question that's like, I don't know. And the confidence also comes from, comes from we promote it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's how we learn. Oh, no. And I think that's extremely important for children to know and to have the confidence and the ease that it's okay. You know, yeah. we're human, we make mistakes. Okay, what do we learn from this? How are we going to solve it? Math, any kind, spelling, you name it. Right. You're going to make mistakes, you just learn from it. Okay. I do want to say to you and your, your uh, viewers that if you'd like to see Steam and Stream in action, we're having a stream night, May 21st from 6 to 8. It's a competition, all grades. Mm. Um, Three-year-olds. Three-year-olds and up. I know. So it should be an interesting evening. We'll keep promoting that. Let I, people I would know, hope so. You Thank know, you. To let I people, people know they should come it. and see it. Because I think seeing it firsthand is, we can talk about it all That's we right. want. But okay. till a second grader kind of stands there and says, well, this is the paintbrush I designed, and this is the why I designed it. Here's how it's going to work. That's right. Here's how I want, you know. They'll state the problem, and then they'll state how exactly. their, their creation is going to solve that problem. And the scientific steps or engineering steps or physics or whatever they had to use to get there will also be included. Excellent. So we're excited about that. Well, and I want to... Yes. And then the presentation part? Yep. Other students critique presentations. Stations. Yes, they do. Yeah, so that everyone knows that it's a safe zone, that, you know, yes. right. and they can say what they want and yeah. know that they're go not being judged. And you know something that shows respect? They, 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 they end up being a lot more respectful because... Well, they're going to be up there in a few times. That's right. correct. You know, and they you want got it. And and I, I've heard kids say, "Well, that's that's good." I didn't look at it that way yeah. in the past. Some of our middle school kids have actually gotten into a conversation over something that they've presented and kind of went, "Well, maybe I'd have done it this way." You know, maybe Tilia, for instance, is unbelievable. She'll sit yes. there and talk to kids about art all all night if I let her. You know, Very and and just kind of, how did you do that? And I got kids getting up from here, going over there to ask her, and she's doing this, and then she's, you know. This whole community learning thing is very, It's the only way we're going to survive. This is all, Monica, thank you so thank much you, for Glenn. being here. It's thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Kate, thank, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we'll get a, thank you a, a, a parka for you next time. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe get a little <laughs> barrel <laughs> going here or something. <laughs> you know, a little fire pit. That's all. <laughs> Listen, gang, thanks and all for Thank you. <laughs> Listen, we're not, good. we're not done yet. We're uh, going to take a shot, real shot, pick poco brick, and we're going to go right to Julia's world. So listen, gang, hang in there. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. We'll be right back in one minute. Thank you.
Welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. And now it is all, it is time. It's not almost time. It's actually time for another edition of Julia's World. Thanks, Glenn. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Julia's World. I am happy to announce that it is officially spring. And with that comes a lot of uh, outdoor artful events. Thank goodness it is now time for that. Um, and I'll start with the first uh, event that I want to talk about. Um, if you're an outdoor photographer, listen up. Um, this Sunday, May 4th, um, Newtonville Camera uh, is holding a seminar and workshop at La Roma Cafe and Bakery in West Newton. That, so it's an outdoor photography seminar and workshop. Um, the seminar starts at 9, goes till 10.30, and then the workshop is um, from 11 to 2, and the great thing about it is that the workshop is outside, of course, and it's going to be in the Great Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, so it should be really beautiful, and I hope for good weather for everybody who's doing that. Um, second, I want to mention um, a lecture that's happening at Harvard at the Saunders Theater as part of the Celebrity Series of Boston. Um, Art Spiegelman, the author of the famous graphic novel Mouse, will be speaking. Um, and if you don't know about him or the graphic novel, um, it's a really, really interesting uh, read. Um, and also the history of the graphic novel and comics is really interesting. So he's going to be talking a little bit about that and the evolution of graphic novels and comics. Um, which is great because in such a short amount of time, they've evolved a lot. Um, and so that, that's happening Friday, May 9th at 8 p.m. Um, and it's called, What the Bleep Happened to Comics? So that's pretty funny. Um, and last but not least, I want to mention, um, you know, a nice little outdoor day trip uh, to Winchester. Um, Winchester Community Music School is having their music mania kind of funny. Um, it's a um, festival with over 175 performances uh, by people of all ages, including students. Um, and there's also going to be food and arts and crafts and face painting and maypole dancing um, and, of course, music. And the, the great thing about it is that the proceeds from the festival are going to um, their financial aid program. So music education is really important. So if you're looking for something to do on Sunday, May 4th, from 1 to 5 p.m., go check it out. And that's all I have for you today. Back to you, Glenn. Why, thank you, Julia. There's that May thing still up there. Oh, there you go. Help, oh, there you go. Thank you, Julia. That was great. Uh, thanks an awful lot. for Julia's world's getting greater and greater and getting a lot of responses from that. You know, if you want to give Julia an idea, you can go to at It's All About Arts. Send us a tweet, right? Send us a tweet and let uh, Julia know of what your event is, and maybe we'll cover it, you know? And right now, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce you to Mr. Dan Cassidy. Hello, sir. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Uh, what is your function at Sacred Heart School? So, uh, I am the Director of Advancement. And director that, of Advancement. Yeah, it covers... I like a, the sound of that. It sounds important, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It seems to be. So, my job covers a lot of different ground. Uh, I do a lot of enrollment. So okay. if somebody is interested in the school and they want to come for a tour, I would be the person to walk them around the building, okay. talk about the programs, talk about our teachers and staff and the move to stream uh, and those type of things. Yep. I cover a lot of marketing communications. So uh, putting out newsletters, writing advertisements, those okay. kinds of things. I do the social media pages. So I handle the Facebook and our own Twitter page at Sacred Heart Ross, tweet us there. There you go. Uh, as <laughs> well as on the flip side, I do fundraising, grant writing, and that type of area as well. You're a busy guy. There are not enough hours in the day. No, there certainly are not. Uh, when somebody comes to you and, and you know and, and says, you know, I want to take a look at this school. Sure. I want to check out what they're doing. Um, what, what are some of the questions you get? I mean, the, the people actually kind of they must be caring about their education, educating their younger scholars if they're. Number one, outreaching to you. Absolutely, yeah. And so there's not one common question that I'll get asked because people are really concerned uh, about a, men, a lot of different areas. And so a lot of it might be, okay, so you're in the city. How's the safety of your school? Great. Oh, you yeah, know, those yeah, kinds yeah, of things. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, I was at this other school. 
my child doesn't seem to get the right fit there. You know, how do you educate your student? And so, you know, we'll talk about the move to stream and, and yep. those type of areas. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great that being able to listen to somebody when they come on tour and have the opportunity to ask them. Hmm. You know, uh, after we go on tour, there's usually a little bit of time where I'm walking back to the office to, to drop them off where they came. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask them, you know, I've talked a lot about Sacred Heart and I've talked a lot about how we go about doing the things that we do. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, what are you educated? What, what are you looking for in right. an educational right. system? What drew you here to, to Sacred Heart today? That's great. I, well, I think that can be an incredible tool for you. Absolutely. Uh, and for the school to be able to hear firsthand from somebody who's got a four-year-old who's looking for a new school to go to and or, or start their education and uh, uh, they, uh, to get those kind of questions, it must be, it's great to be able to gather that info. Definitely. And I mean, I, I come from my own personal point of view too. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a two and a half year old. Uh, Alex, it's almost time for bed. So. <laughs> we'll uh, see you next year. We'll Alex. see you next year. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the thing is that, you know, I'm also concerned about an educational system and, and how would a place like Sacred Heart take my child, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and move them along, you know, through the third, fourth grade right. and all of those things. So right. I, I am proud to say that Alex will be there starting that's next great. September. That's great. You know, every school has has it, has, has some problems. And, and I know that we're, we're a tuition-based educational facility but but there's fundraising going on constantly mm -hmm. you have got one coming up that I am so happy that my department is hooked on to it yes tell us a little bit about what's coming up at the end of May so please. we have what is called the cash cow and family day fundraiser okay and, what, and we can't sell any tickets we're though, not so selling we can, tickets we'll tell you where to go get it but I, I just think that the theory and the, and, and, and the whole concept behind it is breathtaking Yes. So <laughs> what great. we're doing, and it, this is this is a first for the city inside the city limits, I believe. Don't quote me on that, oh. but I believe that it is. Uh, we are we have this softball field behind the school. Yes. Uh, sort of underutilized, I'll say. So what we're doing is we're marking off one thousand two foot by two foot squares. Okay. We're then selling those squares as deeds. Right. Can't say how much. Uh, say nope. How much. Okay. Nope. And so when someone purchases a deed, they will get a deed number, anywhere between one and a thousand. Right. And then we're getting a cow. And we're bringing a cow from the Greener Acre Farms down in Menden, Mass, to the school, and we're going to let the cow on the field. And <laughs> if the cow poops on your deed number, you win. You win. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 10 squares myself. <laughs> yes. That's, pretty, that, that's amazing. That, is this, is, uh, has this, uh, did you make this up? I did. I wish I could say that I did, but well, I did is not. A, this is a fairly successful fundraiser that's been done around, right? It is, yeah. Dedham does one at, at Dedham Day, yeah. and that's kind of where I drew the inspiration from. Right. Um, you know, everyone sort of has their gala event, yeah. you know, and those kinds of things, but to make it unique, and hopefully draw some interest, um, taking a look and in, in, in seeing what was available for fundraising in that sense. That's great. Uh, this is a, a unique way to go that's about great. raising money, specifically for our arts program as well. Yes, and that's where some of the, the money's gonna go to, and I think that's great. Uh, uh, we, uh, we could, the school's been very generous to the department. There's no question about it, but imagine with a kiln, what we could do with a kiln, what we could do with, you know, Whatever, any, you know, those little things you always do need. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dan, we've talked a lot about the school. We've talked a lot about, about, the, about the things that are going on. How does someone get in touch with Sacred Heart School? Uh, there's a few different ways. Again, following us on Twitter yep. at Sacred Heart ROS. Yep. Uh, the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So if you just search in a Facebook, Sacred Heart Roslindale. But I've got, a te I've got a parent out there who's saying, gee, you know, I want to give them a call or I want to yep. send them an email. Absolutely. What's your email address so they can get right to you? It's D and then my last name, C-A-S-S-E-L-Y at sacredheart-boston.org. Yeah. Uh, or they can just call the school at 617-323-2500. My extension's 28, yep. but they can talk to Karen most of the time who's yep. there during You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all that contact information on, on the website. Uh, so just click on this, on the name on it, and they'll go right, take them right to that 
their website. Yeah, and the website of sacredheart-boston.org. Dan, thanks an awful lot. I had to get you up here to talk about that fundraiser. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. We hope to Dan, see everybody thank you there. For thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Listen, gang, Anytime. we're going to be back. We're taking one quick, quick break, like a 30 second break, and we're going to, we're going to get uh, Julia Purchasepi back up here. Listen, gang, don't go away. You're watching It's All About Arts. We'll be right back. back with with Julia nice Julia's world I thought yeah, that was thanks. great thank you very much um, I'm glad we got an opportunity to talk to them about about STEM yeah. and STEAM and, and and I think that it's it, it, it's good to hear from them I mean I can sit here and go about it yeah. and stuff but to hear people that are they're actually you know in putting it into the yep. curriculum for our kids is really really important now you came up and said that you had had a question <laughs> or two yeah, well, okay, so here, logistically with this fundraiser, yes, I assume they let the cow out at some point, right? You know, they just go. Yep. I don't see cows as being incredibly mobile, <laughs> you know? So, so there's got to be an advantage to getting a, a deed of, of a piece of land <laughs> that's close to where they're letting the cow, because well, the cow's just going to go and stand. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do his thing. I think the guy walks him around. I think uh, the, the guy, oh, he, he oh, gets... Oh, okay. And whenever he, he feels like he's he got to do his, do his thing. He leads him about when it's time. And then here's another question. Yes. What if it happens more than once? That's, a, I think, is first <laughs> drop, first served, I guess. I'm not sure. All right. No, I think there, are, right. there are different levels. tiers. Levels. Okay. Yes. One, first, second, there third. Could be a, there could be that kind of tier. I love it. Uh, I have some deeds in my pocket if okay. you're looking for one. <laughs> I'm going to do it just like with my friends. <laughs> it sounds just, like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what else is going to be there for, the, for that? Disney's going to be there. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of other activities going along. There's cool. going to be food. It's going to be fun. It's like when is fun, that again? It's the 31st of May. Cool. Uh, right in back of Sacred Heart. So that's where it's going to be. Cool. Hey, thanks an awful lot. We missed you last week. I, yeah. I, you know, but thanks for being here. I Thank do want to make sure I say, Julia, you're doing a great job. It's lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> love having her here. And listen, gang, thanks an awful lot for being with us. Uh, where can they tweet us again? At It's All About Arts. Yes, and this show will be on YouTube tomorrow at It's All About Arts 1. And that's how you get it. Listen, gang, go out and do something awful for yourself, please. And like we like to say every week, please keep in the forefront of your mind our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign, foreign soil, especially where we're sending people. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll dig you next time.